Hello. Uh, today we're going to be learning how to make a story in Twine. Uh, Twine is a tool for making interactive fiction stories, uh, choose your own adventures type games. Uh, you can also use it for making quizzes, websites, random generators. Um, today I'm going to make a sort of interactive description. Um, so let's get started. I'm here at twinery.org. You can go to that website. Um, you can download this, but I'm going to use it online. So I click use it online. The first time you do this, you're going to get a page which will load in a moment. Um, it's going to tell you some things about Twine. Uh, I'm going to click tell me more. I'm not going to give you time to read this, but I recommend actually reading these things. Um, there's some uh, useful information uh, and really important. Uh, your work is saved in your browser locally. Um, so uh, sharing a link to a Twine story won't work. Um, uh, and it's also possible for you to lose your work. So use that archive button. Um, OK. So that's it. We go to the story list. Um, projects in Twine are called stories. Um, to make a new one. Uh, you can probably spot the button that I'm going to click to do this, but it is over here uh, under the menu. It says plus story, create a brand new story. Um, I'm going to tell you about the wall hanging directly behind me. So I'm going to call this wall hanging. Um, notice that I'm typing. Uh, Twine is a language, is a text-based language, so it's going to be a lot of typing. Uh, so once I do that, it takes me to this new page. Uh, this is when I'm inside of a page. Uh, you can notice that my title is down here. Uh, that's a menu. Uh, this home picture will take me back to the story list, and I can then go back to the story by double clicking on it. Um, and if I click the menu, I have an option to rename the story. Um, there's some other options there. We're not going to worry about them right now. We're going to get started actually making something. So. Uh, Untitled passage, double click this passage to edit it. Um, I usually like to rename my passage because untitled passage is not really useful. Uh, I usually name my first one start, but you could call it, you know, beginning or, uh, you know, it could be about the thing. I right? could call it wall hanging as well as the overall story. Um, and where this says double click this passage to edit, I'm going to start uh, typing in my information. Uh, when I delete that, I actually get some text here that's that's some useful reference about Twine. You can look at this and learn more. Um, I made this wall hanging um, really short description. Um, once I've done something, I close that. I don't know if you notice that. I double click. I click the close button, little X in the corner. Um, and I'm going to test this out. You can test it out by clicking the test or play. Um, play is adequate if you've got more complicated things going on. Test can help you out. Um, so this opens a new tab. And over here in this new tab, um, we see a web page that says, I made this wall hanging. So far, not all that exciting, but it is working, right? Whatever I, I typed, I made this wall hanging. I have a web page that says, I made this wall hanging. Um, let me tell you a little bit more about this. Um, um, uh, perhaps I want to give the player some choices, right? Choices are what make something interactive. Um, uh, so I'm going to say, <laughs> once you start doing a lot of text-based programming, it becomes sort of second nature. So I just kind of like started making a link without thinking about it because I've done this enough. Um, I want to give the player some choices. Uh, I could give them the choice to learn more about the um, learn more about how I made it, um, or I might give them the choice to learn more about the colors. Um, right. So if I just test this out, having made those, uh, we're going to see that. We have all that text, um, but there's no links. I can't click on it and find out more. Um, so this is the first bit of syntax we're going to learn. 
it's how to make a link. It's the it's the link shortcut. Um, we tell the computer, um, the Twine program on the computer, that uh, we want something to be a link by using the square brackets. So square brackets are next to P on your keyboard. Um, you put two of these sort of opening ones at the beginning of what you want to be a link, and two at the end of it. So I'm going to make that a link. Um, notice that when I did that, um, this whole part underneath, if I click on it, it becomes underlined. That's sort of saying that all of this is the same thing. It's grouped together by that link. Um, I'm going to make another link here. Learn two square brackets. Learn more about the colors. Two more square brackets. And now that I've made these links, I'm going to close this passage again. Um, and when I did that, uh, two new passages have shown up. Learn more about how I made it. Learn more about the colors. Um, I'm going to edit one of these. I'm going to say, um, I crocheted this. Uh, I learned how to crochet from my mother when I was 12. Might have been 13, but 12. Um, right, so just, you know, a little bit oh, more stuff. I forgot to put the word it in. I crocheted it. <laughs> there we go. Um, great. So, again, I'm going to test this out. Play. So notice that when this loads, which takes a moment, um, it has these, these are different colors. These are the links. And if I mouse over them, they have this nice color change. Um, and if I click on it, it actually takes me to that passage that I had typed in. Um, I can go back. I can go to the other passage. That one I haven't typed anything in. Um, uh, so that's, that's the basics here. Um, there is one more thing that you're probably going to want to be able to do um, before you just jump right in. Um, so, uh, sometimes you want to make a passage that's going to go somewhere that's not with the same passage title as the text. Right? Uh, I was able to use the back button to get back to start, but it's possible that I might want to like not have people have to use that. I might want to give them some text. Um, I'd love to be able to say something that says back, um, and notice now I'm just typing in those square brackets. Um, but I want that back passage link. Instead of reading to a passage called back, I want to take it back to that starting passage. Um, right? I could say start. Uh, let me show you that. I type in start. And that's the reason it's better to have it enabled start rather than um, untitled passage. See how the arrow goes both ways? Um, the way to make something that says back but takes you to start is we use a redirect. So I'm going to type in back, and I'm going to type in the um, something that looks like an arrow. Um, and that thing that looks like an arrow is going to be done by typing minus and then um, an angle bracket. Something that looks like this. Um, you know this as a a greater than sign. Um, and so I do shift period to type that in. And notice how it now says back goes to start. Um, start is showing up here because Twine conveniently helps us know what all of our passage names are. Um, and if I do that, it still looks like this, but let's test it out. learn more about how I made it, and go back, takes me back to this. Uh, so that's the basics of Twine. When you're done with making your Twine project, um, or when you want to take a break and go do something else, click Home, uh, click Archive. That will save all your projects. Um, I'll download a file. Um, I'll talk more about files later. Uh, hope you enjoyed this. Stay tuned for more things you can do with Twine. Um, have a great day.